This video demonstrates how you can convert into a very simple array model. Let's start by making a scalar model. You have some interest rate, 5% per year. In this model, we can see three simple variables, one bank account, the interest rate, and the interest added. We can view this in a graph to see the behavior of the bank account. What if I have two bank accounts with two different interest rates? Of course, I could copy this model, but it is much easier using the arrays in Parson Studio. The easiest way of making an array is to say here, that it has a dimension. Let's say here, this is for instance three elements. Then you see that we have three elements, all of them having the value 5. Then you see I don't have a valid value yet. That is because I'm not at the start of the simulation. So now when resetting the model, I see these values 5. What is now interesting is that this variable has also got three elements automatically. Because the dimensions of this one is automatic, then because this variable is an array, this one automatically becomes an array with three elements. So I do not have to enter the dimension for this variable. The level may have only one element. I can actually run the model now. If I run it, you see I get a very high value here, and all these elements are added into the bank account. But normally, you may want to have three different accounts as well. So I go in here and say this one should also have three elements. Again, when I'm at the end of the simulation, I have to rewind before any initial value is available. So here we see we have the interest rate, how much interest is added, and what do we have on the bank account. When running this model now, I get the same result for all elements. I may want to view them in the graph. I can do it the same way by dragging the value in here. And now I have three different graphs here, but they are all equal. I also have the old one trying to show the entire bank value. That one is obsolete, so I may want to delete it. Go in here on parameters, and I double click the parameter I do not want to be there. Now I want some different values on my interest rate. To do that, let's see. I rearrange a bit first here, so I can have this one available. And we make a small chart control to edit these values. I don't show the name of this one, and I say I want to show these as bars. I may also want to fill the bars, so I double click and say I want to fill them solid by a smooth color. Now I have the ability to change these ones individually. So I reset the model and I say one is a bit less than five, one is five, and one is a bit more. And I run the model. Then we see the three different results as a graph and we can see the auto report. Another video will continue on this model to use names in place of numbers for these indices. Thank you for watching.